In this video, we present solutions for a couple simple circuits that illustrate how we use the principle of Ohm's Law to solve for voltages, currents, and powers in a circuit. Well, let's start with a single loop circuit that contains one resistor in series with a current source. And as instructed in the problem, we'll use the principle of Ohm's Law to solve for the node voltages, the node-to-node -node currents, and the element powers. Well, here's our simple circuit with a 48 ohm resistor in series with a source that provides 8.1 amps of current. To apply Ohm's Law to this circuit, we begin by labeling the current flowing from left to right through the resistor as I, and the voltage drop from left to right as V. Now the current we've labeled as I has the same reference direction as the current source, so its value is the same as the source value, which is negative 8.1 amps. Next we can use Ohm's law to describe the voltage drop across the resistor, which is the product of the resistance times the current flow in the direction of the voltage drop. The resistance is 48 ohms and the current from left to right is negative 8.1 amps, so the voltage drop from left to right is negative 388.8 volts. Because of the negative sign, this means that the voltage at node 1 is 388.8 volts less than the voltage at node 3. Likewise, of course, the voltage at node 3 is 388.8 volts greater than the voltage at node 1. Once we know the voltage across the resistor, we can determine the voltages at all the nodes in the circuit. Anytime we compute the voltages in a circuit, we need to pick one point as our reference, and for this problem we were instructed to use node 0 as the reference and to assign it a voltage of 0 volts. Because nodes 1 and 2 are connected directly to node 0 by a wire, they'll have the same voltage. Now we've determined that the remaining node, node 3, is 388.8 volts greater than node 1. Node 1 has a voltage of 0 volts, so we assign the voltage at node 3 positive 388.8 volts. Now because of the current source, determining the currents in this single loop circuit is relatively straightforward. We do though need to be careful about the reference direction for the current. If for instance we define the current as flowing from node 0 toward node 1, then the current value will be negative 8.1 amps, which is the value of the current source which has a polarity direction from 0 to 1. If on the other hand we define the current as flowing from node 0 toward node 2, then the current value will be positive 8.1 amps. Now finally we can determine the powers in this circuit. Now because the voltage drop across a wire is 0, we have no power between nodes 0 and 1 or nodes 0 and 2. To determine the power between nodes 1 and 3, which is the power associated with the resistor, we can multiply the current flowing from left to right by the voltage drop from left to right, which is negative 8.1 times negative 388.8, or 3149 watts, or 3.149 kilowatts. The power between nodes 2 and 3 which is the power associated with the current source, is determined by multiplying the current flowing from node 3 to node 2 times the voltage drop from node 3 to node 2, which is negative 8.1 amps times positive 388.8 volts, or negative 3,149 watts, or negative 3.149 kilowatts. Now because the power associated with the resistor is positive, we say the resistor absorbs power, and because the power associated with the current source is negative, we say 
the source supplies power. And of course the sum of all the powers is equal to zero. Now if we'd like, we can go back to the original problem and verify that our answers are correct. Now let's try another problem that has a voltage source in series with a resistor in a simple single loop circuit. Again, as instructed in the problem, we'll use the principle of Ohm's law to solve for the node voltages, the node-to-node -node currents, and the element powers. Well, here's our simple circuit with an 80 ohm resistor in series with a voltage source that provides 6.6 .6 volts. To analyze this circuit, let's call the current flowing downward through the resistor I. And let's use V for the voltage that drops across the resistor from node 3 to node 2. Now because the voltage source is connected by wires to nodes 2 and node 3, we can quickly recognize that the voltage across the resistor that drops from node 3 to node 2 is equal to 6.6 .6 volts. Then we can use Ohm's law to solve for the current through the resistor, which is the ratio of the voltage, 6.6 .6 volts, to the resistance, 80 ohms. This gives us a value of 82.5 milliamps for the current. Now if we set the node 0 as our reference and give that a voltage of 0 volts, then the voltages at nodes 1 and 3, which are connected directly to node 0 by a wire, will also be 0. And because the voltage source provides a voltage increase of 6.6 .6 volts from node 2 to node 0, the voltage at node 2 relative to node 0 is negative 6.6 .6 volts. Now for this single loop circuit, there's only one current, which we've established has a value of 82.5 milliamps. We do, though, need to be careful about the sign, positive or negative, for the current. The current flowing from node 0 to node 1, for instance, has a value of positive 82.5 milliamps. The current flowing from node 3 to node 1 has a value of negative 82.5 milliamps. Finally, the powers for the two wire segments, node 0 to node 1 and node 1 to node 3, are 0. The power for the segment containing the voltage source, node 2 to node 0, is equal to the voltage times the current. Now because the current we've labeled as I flows in the direction that enters the voltage from the side of its negative polarity, we compute the power as negative I times V which results in negative 0.5445 watts or negative 544.5 milliwatts. The negative sign indicates that this element provides power to the circuit. For the resistor between nodes 3 and 2, the current we've labeled as I flows in the direction that enters the voltage we've labeled as V from the side of its positive polarity. Accordingly, its power is positive I times V, which results in positive 544.5 milliwatts. Again, the positive sign indicates that this element absorbs power from our circuit. And now let's go back to the problem statement and verify that our answers are correct. 